Monty! Jesus has risen! Oh, hi, Otto. Do you like my shirt, Tongue? Your tie is very tasteful, Monty. But when somebody says to you, Jesus is risen, you're supposed to say, He is risen indeed. Let's try it again. Jesus is risen! Uh, he is risen indeed? Louder! <gasps> He is risen indeed? Come on, Monty, Jesus is risen. This is very exciting news. He is risen indeed. Put some gusto into it, Monty. He is risen indeed. Excellent. Have a chocolate Easter buddy in honor of Jesus' resurrection. Ooh. Now I must continue spreading the exciting news. I will shout from the mountain top that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Who's risen? Jesus is risen! Jax, Victor, Jesus is risen! Yep. We know. Well, then come on, let's tell everyone the amazing news! Uh, we're actually gonna go play kickball. Yeah. Okay, suit yourself. <laughs> Jesus is risen! Jesus is risen! Affirmative. Not now, Otto. Can't you see we're busy? Jesus is oh. risen! What are you doing? I'm spreading the exciting news! Well, go do it somewhere else! Jesus is risen! Tell everyone the good news! <sighs> Have a nice day! Jesus is risen! He is risen indeed. Are you gonna buy something? <laughs> Oh, why is no one excited to hear that Jesus is risen? Am, am I doing it wrong? Monty, why did you get so excited? Because you told me to be excited. A and you gave me chocolate. Hey, maybe that's it. You should have given everyone chocolate. <laughs> Monty, I don't think you understand what a big deal this is. Jesus had died. Like my goldfish? Yes, exactly like your goldfish. Jesus was a fish? No, Jesus wasn't a fish. He died like your fish, but then Jesus came back to life. He came back to life? Can you imagine? <gasps> the disciples' teacher, their friend, had died and then came back to life. It's absolutely incredible. Jesus is risen! Tell everyone the good news! Jesus is risen! Jesus is risen! At last! A chance to unleash my artistic genius! But what will my masterpiece be? Miss Jane said we're supposed to draw ourselves with God, Victor. Of course, Adelphia, but how best to depict myself with the Almighty? This requires careful thought, since it will no doubt be hanging in a museum one day. Where does one even- Hey, check it out! Here's God and me playing basketball. Where's God in the picture? A guy's right there, about to make a slam dunk. Why does God look like a whirlwind? Because God is super fast. Oh, not bad, Ottoman. But the scale of your picture isn't sufficient. You'd only be able to fit God's foot in a picture that small. What are you talking about, Victor? The fact is, God, the Alpha and Omega, is extremely large. Feast your optic nerves on this. Behold! God the Almighty standing next to this skyscraper. And that's me in the window. I was going to have me holding a megaphone, but then I remembered that God has very excellent hearing. Where's the rest of God? <laughs> Ottoman. If I drew all of God, then I'd have to make myself so small that you wouldn't even be able to see me, which would be a loss for everyone. Oh, well, your painting is really good, Victor. But God still seems too small. Too small? But I never think too small. God created everything, our entire universe. God must be pretty big to have made all of that. Uh, Ada, where are you in the picture? Oh, you see that speck by the Earth? me inside my space cruiser with the hyper light speed tachyon drive. I invented it to go into space so I can chat with God. That is some impressive detail. Thank you. But 
But what if God is bigger than the entire universe? Well, then Miss Jane would be asking us to draw the impossible. You know what? You're right. People always say God is everywhere, that God is the beginning and the end of everything. So how could anyone ever really draw God? Ta-da! What did you paint, Tot? God. Well, this ought to be good. <laughs> yeah, let's see it, Tot. Oh, wow. That's like an excellent oh, light. Wow. Look at that fresh joke. That's awesome. I really like it. It's awesome. Otto, why are we hiding in the janitor's closet? Did you forget what day it is? Um, Sunday? No, it's Mischief Sunday! <gasps> Mischief Sunday? Oh, I forgot! The one Sunday out of the year that Victor's great aunt Marjorie is out of town. When Victor's extra bad? Last year he convinced me that the church had a new dress code. I showed up in a kilt! I mean, I looked awesome, but still! <laughs> You think that's bad? Last year, Victor told me he had caught an angel on a string. It turned out to be a kite, but for a while there, I thought I'd crashed an angel. Ah! Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no! We can't let Victor get away with it again this year. We have to stop him. But how do we stop him? We could tell Pastor Donna. Or we could trick him back. Can't tell Pastor Donna. Victor will just why. Can't trick Victor back. He'll trick you two times over before you set up your first trick. You all know me. You all know how many times Victor has tricked me into falling into tapioca or having tapioca poured on my head, not to mention the events of the tapioca canning factory field trip. Oh, tapioca! Okay, Jax, but what do we do? We will make Victor think that he has had a big encounter with God. It will be such a shock, he will change his ways forever. Like Saul's big encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus? Precisely. When Victor comes to trick us, I'll blind him with this flashlight. And then you both say, Victor, why do you trick your friends into this megaphone? Both of you at the same time, so you sound like the voice of God. Bright lights, loud voices, he'll think it's an encounter with God for sure. This is a really great plan, Jax! Thanks. I've been working on it for three years. My name is Victor and I am great. Okay, on the count of three, everyone weep out. I am the best. Oh. Victor! Victor! Why, Why do you trick, trick your friends? friends? I didn't catch all that, but enough pleasantries. These are for you. Presents? Yes, Jackson. Presents for all of my friends. But it's Mischief Sunday. It is indeed, dear Clarabella. Then why are you doing this? I was inspired to take a year off of Mischief Sunday and give back to those that I've wronged. What inspired you? <laughs> Did you hear loud voices? Did you go blind? No, I was just sitting there and I thought of it. A small encounter with God, if you will. Oh. Why were you all in the janitor's closet? You guys planning some shenanigans or something? I feel so bad for Mimi and Monty. Yeah. I don't even know what to say when I see them at church. Their family is going through a lot. I mean, their grandma did just pass away. What's passed away? It's a nice way of saying someone died, Tot. Like Mr. Gills? Yes, like when your goldfish died. Oh. Mimi's not going to take this well. I know. She cried for three weeks when her hydrangea bush died. And those were seasonal flowers. And poor Monty, he just bottles things up. But what do you say? What can?
can you say when something like this happens? Ugh, should we bring it up when we see them? Or should we wait for them to bring it up? And what if they don't bring it up? And we don't bring it up? And then we run out of things to say! And then we're just standing there, not bringing it up! And everything around us just gets quieter and quieter. And then we can't bring it up because we already didn't bring it up before! Guys, expressing your concern really isn't that difficult. I think you're overthinking this. Are we, Leo? Are we overthinking it? Or are we not thinking about it enough? Mimi! What? Where? There! Oh no, they're almost here. And we haven't thought of what to say. Relax, just follow my lead. It'll be fine. Hi, hi Mimi. Hi, hi Monty. Uh, hi, Mimi. Hi, Monty. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, what was that, Leo? You said follow your lead. Yeah, you didn't say anything. I'm sorry, I, I froze up. I'm not sure I've ever seen Mimi not skip to church. What do we say now? We missed our only chance. It's just like we feared. We'll see them after worship. I'm sure there will be an opportunity to offer our condolences. Now hurry up, we're gonna be late. Boy, they look pretty distraught. Yeah. Maybe we can use Pastor Donna's sermon about Tabitha to help Mimi and Monty. I don't know if that would be helpful. Why not? Tabitha came back to life. True, but... Could Mimi's grandma come back to life? And Mr. Gills? I'm afraid not. But even if someone did come back to life, they wouldn't live forever. Tabitha certainly didn't. She didn't? No, she died again eventually. Mimi! Hi, Tot. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi Mimi. Hey, Mimi. Hi, Monty. Hi, Monty. Sorry your grandma died. <gasps> Thank you, Tot. I'm sorry, too. <sighs> oh, I'm so oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm very oh, sorry Mimi. for oh, your loss. Oh, we no. all know, guys. It's all right. Thank you for saying something. It means a lot. How are you holding up, Monty? I have a lot of feelings. Not a lot of words. I'm surprised you even came to church. Yeah. Didn't you want to take the day off? It's been a pretty sad time. I've cried a lot. But then at the memorial service, people started telling all these wonderful stories about Grandma. And that really helped. It felt like she was back with us again. We also met the president there, who said Grandma was the greatest person ever. You met the president? Yep. The president president? Yeah, they were state senators together. Your Grandma was a state senator? Uh-huh. A four-term state senator. She was a devoted conservationist, too. She loved to protect animals and trees. There's even a state park named after her, Munkle Meadows. She has a park named after her? Your last name is Munkle? Uh-huh. And after she retired, she started a clothing charity, Plaid for the People. They make shirts for people in need. Wow, she sounds like a really special person. I can't imagine what you're going through. It's been really hard. I miss her a lot. But one of the things that helps is thinking each morning, Mimi, what would Grandma be doing right now? And the answer this morning was she'd be at church. Really? Right after losing someone? Oh, yes. Her devotion to God is what led her to help people and serve her community. So we wanted to be here today with all our friends. Well, we're glad you're here, Mimi. You bet. I'm so inspired by her life, I've decided I'm going to enter politics. I even make buttons. Wow. That's great, Mimi. You do know you need to be 30 years old to run for Senate, right? Of course I do. But if I start campaigning now, I'll have the edge. Vote Mimi. I'm going to be a Supreme Court Justice. Those are appointed by the president, Monty. Who I met two days ago. I have an in because my grandma's the greatest. She is. She is. Community Garden's new flower bed is gonna be so amazing! But you know what'll make it even more amazing? If we plant these flower bulbs? Uh, yes! Also, a watering can! Be right back! And Garfield, and Garfield. Oh, I think it's sweet that 
Mimi wants to make a flower bed in memory of her grandmother. Oh, yes. I was so sad to hear that Senator Munkle passed away. But soon we'll have all these flowers to remember her by. Wow, that is a lot of bulbs, Clara. How'd you find so many? I just dug them up from last year's flowers. But the flowers from last year are dead now. You got those bulbs from dead flowers? I did. <gasps> I did! Oh no, I'm a flower grave robber! I don't think it's as bad as that, Clara. I just... You think it's worse. Oh, it probably is. It usually is. No, I just don't think these bulbs will work. I mean, dead flowers are just... dead. I don't see how bulbs from dead flowers can help us. Did somebody say donkeys and dance shoes? I hope not. Then you both must be talking about life and death. Um... We were just saying that these bulbs won't work since they came from dead flowers. Oh, that makes sense. Except they will totally work. What? Oh, yes. Flowers will rise up. I've seen it. If that were to happen, though, it would mean the flowers were... were... Zombie flowers! <laughs> By planting the bulbs, the same flowers that died last year will come back? That's amazing! Oh no, they won't be the same. They'll be new and different. Still, God raising up life out of death is pretty amazing. Wow, I had no idea that flowers were so special. Oh, my mom says death works that way for people too. Did she mean... Please, don't let her mean zombies! No, I mean, when my grandmother died, we were all very sad. She was such a big part of our lives. Her life helped shape my life and my brother Monty's life and so many others. We're like the bulb she left behind. That's really beautiful, Mimi. Isn't it? It's so great to know that death isn't the end, that God is always turning death into new life. It's like my grandmother always said, tree frogs don't grow trees. They just live in the... Oh, um, what does that mean? I don't know. But she also said, get to planting those flowers, Mimi. They won't plant themselves. And she was right. Flowers can't plant themselves because they don't have arms. Open Montgomery. That kickball has to be around here somewhere. I found it. <gasps> no, Monty, wait! Look, we found a trap. Yes, but who would build a trap in the middle of the? <laughs> you know, this trap almost seems like one of mine, but something's missing. What's the joke? What is funny about being in a cage? In a cave? Oh, yes. I remember now. Tapioca cannons. That's hilarious. <laughs> Definitely my handiwork. What do we do now, Victor? Not to worry, Monty old chum. When anyone sets off one of my traps, it notifies my trusty trap pager. So I may come to laugh at them. And then release them, of course. There it is now. Now I just come and get us out by pushing that release button right over there. Wow, you can reach the button from all the way up here? Oh no, you're right. And no one can hear us down here. We're trapped. We're trapped like rats. Monty, what will we do? Well, we could sing. Monty, our situation is completely hopeless. Why, oh why would we sing? To praise God, like this old classic. Oh, when you're trapped in a cage for what feels like an age, you still got God. When the cage is in a cave and it's hard to be brave, you still got God. Uh, Victor, you're not singing along. How could I sing along? You're clearly making up a song about us. Am I? I thought I was singing about Paul and Silas being trapped. Paul and Silas were thrown into prison for preaching about Jesus, Monty. But they did sing, right? Well, yes which eventually led to an earthquake that freed them. 
Hmm, okay, Monty, let's sing! When you're in a trap and the road might snap, you still got God. So you stay in the stair with nary a care because you still got God. You've still got God! Monty, look! For a second there, I thought... Me too, Monty. Me too. Still, I don't feel quite as hopeless anymore. It's all right. Even if we don't get out, everything will be fine by next episode. Next what? Nothing. Let's sing. When, when you, you get, get into a scrape and you fail to escape, you still got God. Your plan may be flawed, but you still got God. And God still got you. Last week, Pastor Pete said Pentecost was like the church's birthday. So I decided to get the church some smart-looking curtains. You know, spruce the place up. Oh, my goodness. He did say that. So he meant that it was First Second Church's birthday? Uh, yeah, something like that. Well, I don't want to show up empty-handed. No, you do not. Not on the church's birthday. Buildings hold grudges like nobody's business. I got in a feud with my garage once, and I still don't go in there. But... Where can I get a gift at this hour? On a Sunday? Relax, Clara. We'll just pop down to Megaware Hardware and pick up some bathroom tiles. Or a fresh can of paint. Oh, thank you, Otto. You're the best. You could get a rake, or you could get a hose, you could get a thermal electric water heater. I don't want to get the church just anything. I want it to be special. You could buy some door frames, or some carpet, or a set of titanium squirrel-resistant roof gutters. Hey, didn't Pastor Pete say there would be divided tongues of fire attending the party? I think he said those words, yes. I could get a fire extinguisher. You know, in case they get too rowdy. Good thinking. You can't trust fire tongues at parties. Where's the party taking place, Otto? I don't know. I figured we'd hear it. I expected something like a carnival mixed with a fair. Mixed with a mixer. Well, I don't hear anything. Hey, Victor, where's the birthday party for First Second Church being held? Birthday party? What in the world are you talking about? Because of Pentecost, Claire and I went to Megaware and got some small home improvement items for the church. Because it's the building's birthday. Um, the building wasn't founded today. It was built in April of 1913. As you can clearly see in the cornerstone right over there. Then what was Pastor Pete talking about? He meant that Pentecost was the birth of the church itself. Right, the birth of the church we're standing outside of. No, 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 no. Not the church building. The church is a community of Christians around the world. Pentecost was the beginning of the church because it's the day the Holy Spirit came among the disciples. Are you with me? Oh, yeah! That was right before the disciples went out into the world telling everyone the good news about Jesus. So the church didn't start with a building. It started with the Holy Spirit. So there's no birthday party. Not for the building. No. Oh. Oh. Lucky we saved our receipts. At the very least, we'll get store credit. Have you considered purchasing trick and trap supplies? They're having a special on some of my favorite items. I'm glad you finally got a backpack, Otto. Huh? Don't be absurd, Montgomery. It must be something inside the backpack. Is it something secret, Otto, old chum? Monty, Victor, wh what are you guys doing in my hiding tree? Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, can I get rid of these water balloons filled with tapioca pudding then, Victor? Tapioca? Monty, <laughs> you wonderful kidder. Those were here when we climbed up. 
Now stop interrupting Otto. He was about to explain to us what he prizes so highly. Oh, it's just my digital recorder. Oh. I don't get it. Something hasn't been sitting right with me during worship for the last few months. But I finally got to the bottom of it. I caught Pastor Pete and Pastor Donna in a lie. Well now, careful with those accusations, Ottoman. What do you suspect they're lying about? God. They keep changing who they say God is, so they're either lying or they don't actually know. I don't know which one is worse. Don't be ridiculous, Otto. It's very clear who God is. Oh, really? Then feast your ears on this. <laughs> so what are we listening for? Pastor Pete sounds the same as always. He said, and I quote, God is the Holy Spirit. Yep. And here's Pastor Donna last month, talking about God the Father, the creator of the universe. So, what's the problem? No, no, Otto has a point. They just changed their story. First they say God is the Father in heaven, then they say God is the Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. They're saying Jesus is God, <gasps> but I thought Jesus is God's son. Oh no, now they've brought Jesus into their web of deceit. So now we don't know who God is, and there seems to be some kind of massive cover-up. This thing is big, Otto. It could go all the way to the top. Wherever that is. Uh, I mean, which is it? Is God the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit? Yes. What? God's all three of those. At the same time, Monty? Yep, or deuces. God is those three distinct, separate, same things. And that doesn't sound strange to you? No. God can do anything, so if God wants to be three things at the same time, that's A-OK -okay with me. Hey, look, tree zebras. Those are raccoons, Monty. And they found my stockpile, I mean, someone's stockpile of tapioca balloons! Scatter! Thank you.